And hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, it's a wet Wednesday afternoon, and it's the perfect time to do another episode of Funky Monkey at the Movies. Wouldn't you agree, my nameless producer? Yes, or then again, no, because I prefer to be indoors. Wouldn't we all? But anyway, today we've been to see X-Men Dark Phoenix. And it's not the worst movie out there. No. It was at least better than the... Captain Marvel. Don't do that. It's at least better than X-Men 3. Or the original one, yeah. Yeah. Which was kind of telling the same sort of story. Let me start with my minor niggles of it. Okay. Straight away. It's supposed to be set in 1992. Uh But there was nothing that specifically said... 90s to me. I know obviously it was the early 90s, but there was nothing that made it stand out as being 90s-ish. At least Captain Marvel, for all that you rag on it, did its best to, to present a 1990s vibe. Uh, I don't know, it felt a little bit forced, didn't it? With like, hey, here's a modem, and here's, here's the early Blockbuster internet. and all that and kind of thing. Blockbuster video. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, you can either have it forced, or you can just say I that this know. is the time period. And they could have done with just some more, maybe nineties clothes and some nineties uh, haircuts. Well, I what were nineties haircuts? I what can't was... remember. Yeah. But like, if I saw one, I'd remember. But like, do you remember those, for example, awful colour-changing T-shirts they had? Heat-activated. I had one of those. Yes, yes, you did. But, you know. It was one of my proudest pieces of clothing. <laughs> It was brilliant. I used to love wearing it. Well, yeah. I mean, the other thing is, so obviously, these four X-Men films were supposed to be split out for like 35, 40 years or something now. Yeah. No one seemed to get any older. I mean, obviously, you had you brought more people in, like Cyclops and so on, later on. So obviously, they got older, but nobody looked any older. Magneto or anybody... I mean, if they well, the uh, mystique they did say in Days of Future Past with uh, Trask saying that the ravages of time wouldn't really affect mystique so much. Well, yeah, I mean that's understandable with mystique because of her uh, abilities to look like anybody. But I mean, maybe you could push that a little bit for Hank, who got his changing serum off her, and suddenly he could turn it on and off at will. Yeah. But yeah. Where did that come from? Uh, I'm not sure. It must have just been some kind of development that he developed. Because they didn't really explain that very well, did they? You could attribute it to Apocalypse in the last one. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. But I liked it. It was reasonably well acted. No one did anything really amazing. And special effects are okay. But again, no... I don't know, maybe I've just got special effect fatigue. It, it, it just seemed like functional and didn't really bring anything to it. No, no, I was functional. The only time I was remotely enthused about anything was the cool bit nearer the end when uh, Phoenix Jean smokes some of the nondescript bads. I don't know if it's worth bothering putting out a spoiler alert for this because. No. Nah, the story's well, a bit slight. Yeah, there's not a huge story, so I mean, they go into space. To Jean gets hit by a, like a wave of power. Yeah, she's supposed to be a solar flare, but it's actually the phoenix energy and she sucks it into her body. And then a bunch of... Well, I mean, at least that's aliens. closer to the, um, the original comic book version. They went into space, they're on a shuttle, she stayed behind to save the shuttle and all the other X-Men kind of thing. And then got hit with the Phoenix Force. Yeah, well the Phoenix Force saw she was dying and came down and saved her and things like that. Then, you know, a bunch of aliens turn up and look like humans. Yeah, well they were in kind of disguise, weren't they? Because there was that shot near the beginning where it was in the woods and it kind of looked a little bit like uh, a shaved version of Groot. Yeah, something like that. Well, Groot doesn't have hair anyway, so it's a wood thing. But like, yeah, but like I mean, like, Groot. like streamlined, cut down kind of. Yeah, fleshier. Yeah, kind of. <sighs> I had to look them up, those aliens. And apparently they were a thing, they were the aliens that uh, 
in the comic book version when Jean ate their star and they finally died. Oh, right. The Badur Empire? Badari, I think. Badari, that one. Yeah. I mean, in the comic version, all they did was die, basically. And then be like a plot point of why the Phoenix was bad. Because, like, she'd just eaten the star and killed an entire civilization off accidentally. Yeah. Which is never a good look. No, not really. I don't know. There's not a lot we can say about yeah, this film. It was okay. Plot went along. It was brilliant. I mean, there was nothing... It didn't really hang anywhere, did it? I mean, the, the pacing was fairly good. The acting was okay. But no one was, like, standout exceptional. Um, I'll tell you what is a massive spoiler, though. Yeah. Jennifer Lawrence gets... Uh, Jennifer dies Lawrence in the first feet. third. She dies. Yeah. She gets killed off. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think she'll be that too choked up about that. No. And uh, Jean died as well at the end, probably. Or may have survived, but she's not there anymore. Who yeah. knows? They didn't really explain it. I like to think that she's already still out there. Yeah. I thought it would have been cool if they'd used her phoenix power to kind of show that there's alternate realities out there and kind of made it a gateway into whatever the future of the X-Men is in the MCU. If there is an X-Men MCU. Well, we'll see. Yeah. I mean... Uh, I wouldn't put money on it. Yeah, there weren't any, like, end credit scenes or anything like that, so... No, no post credit stingers. Yeah. I just said, like, ended. Charles and Magneto going to have a game of chess. Same old, same old. Yeah. I don't know, it's like... It's at least somewhat of a happy ending for them. Yeah. I don't know if I like their portrayal of Charles in that, how they all thought he was kind of bad for trying to help Jean. It's a toughie, to be sure. It's a tough one. Yep. I mean, on the one hand, trauma like that is a terrible thing and you really don't want it to colour the rest of your life but on the other hand you can't shy away from it Yeah. you have to face up to it and try and accept it and move past it I like that there was a Dazzler cameo even though she didn't actually do anything yeah I mean that was I suppose another thing right is you've got these two mutants working with Magneto and they didn't really tell you anything about them or who they were or what their names were they're just there for the X-Men a bit and then like at least one of them probably died later on couldn't even yeah. tell she just got thrown off the train yeah <laughs> they could have fleshed them two out a bit more yeah one thing I did want to get in before we finish uh -huh. is uh I did notice that Hans Zimmer was working on the score again. Uh-huh. Yes, and you could very much tell. He was kind of pedestrian and meh, wasn't he, really? I mean, I, I really enjoyed, like, the first of those X-Men films. I really liked the score to that. Especially when there was stuff like Magneto, and you had his little Magneto theme. Yeah. But this one, just a bit meh, wasn't it, really? Yeah, well, it's the last one. They know that it's the last one. And instead of doing like something like Final Fantasy, where if this doesn't sell, then we're quitting it completely. I so said they go all out. They just say, uh, well, no point putting any effort into this. One might as well just throw it out the door. More of a went out with a whimper than a bang, I suppose. Yeah. All right. All right, so can we use that for your final thought then? Uh, kind of, yeah. I mean, functional, but nothing amazing, this film. Um, kind of went out with a whimper rather than a bang. Acting was okay, special effects were okay. Music was a bit meh. I'd give it maybe a six or a really low seven. I'm going to be cruel. I'm going to be cruel. I'm going for a five. Okay, well, five maybe, yeah. I'd go somewhere around five, six, seven. Low seven. Low seven, high five. Yeah. All right, so, ladder? Uh, I would go... Endgame, Shazam, Dark Phoenix, Captain Marvel. Uh, I will go Infinity Saga, which is Infinity War and Endgame. It still doesn't count for this year, but I'll let you leave it in. Then... Captain Marvel, and then Shazam, 
And I'll put Dark Phoenix at the bottom. Okay. So this has been Funky Monkey and his nameless producer. Do all the things. Uh, tunnel again. Yeah, so. Check out the Mines channel. Begging links are below. We're going to keep going until we get out of the tunnel again, because we're like that. Okay. Even though it's still raining, we're magically out of the tunnel. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you at the movies. Bye.